Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine, the channel where we explain your favorite mystery, thriller, and horror movies. My name is Vic Shy, and this week, my friends, we're going over the 2013 horror film Evil Dead, a remake and continuation of sorts for the franchise. Evil Dead tells the story of Mia, a drug addict trying to become sober. She and her brother, along with three of their friends, isolate themselves at a cabin in the middle of the woods to help Mia cope with the withdrawal. Withdrawal. An unknown evil is then unleashed and begins to wreak havoc on the group in a brutal and extremely bloody fashion. My friends, this is a bloody one. The film shows a ton of disturbing imagery and does not shy away from showing the gory goodness that we all know and love. Evil Dead is a surprisingly great entry in the franchise as it takes liberties to modernize aspects of the original film while still respectfully paying homage to it, which I appreciated. This movie holds a special place in my heart as it's one of the first films my wife wife and I saw in theaters together when we first started dating back in 2013. Nothing like extreme violence and gore to win over a woman's heart. Thank you all for tuning in and make sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And by hit, I mean completely obliterate and murder that like button with a chainsaw. But without further ado, turn off the lights and join me as we explore the bloody world of Evil Dead. Our movie begins and we see an injured bloody teenage girl walking through a dark and misty forest. She is suddenly jumped and captured by two men who knock her out cold. She wakes up chained to a wooden pole with a bag over her head in what appears to be a torture chamber. We can see several instruments of torture on a table and dead cats hanging from the ceiling. An old woman speaking Welsh tells her not to be afraid and that only the evil book can undo what the evil book has done. Hmm makes sense. She is unmasked by her own father and it is revealed that the sweet teenage girl killed her mother. He pours gasoline on top of her head and reluctantly attempts to light a match. She pleads with him to look at her and to take her home while the old woman tells him to cleanse her soul and give her peace. I will rip your soul out, daddy. Say what now? I'll rip your soul out, you pathetic! Oh, that, okay. While his clearly possessed daughter burns, the man takes out a double-barreled shotgun and blasts her head off as we are treated to a gnarly title sequence. We are then introduced to our group of main characters, couples David and Natalie, Eric and Olivia, and David's younger sister, Mia. The first letter of their names spell out demon, which I thought was really cool. Oh, and can't forget about their dog, Grandpa. The group are staying at David and Mia's family cabin to help her beat her heroin drug addiction and become sober. David and Mia have a conversation, and it seems that they haven't seen each other in quite some time. He gives her a necklace that resembles the one Ash Williams gave to his girlfriend Linda in the original film. Mia makes him promise to stay with her until the end, which he does. Okay. Hope to die. You might want to hope for something else there, David. With the group as witness, Mia tosses her heroin down a well and promises never to touch it again. They enter the cabin which seems to have been broken into and has a bad smell that only Mia seems to notice. David and Mia have a conversation where Mia tells him a story about their mother before she died. She says that she would confuse her for David and would keep calling out for him, leading me to believe that she probably suffered from Alzheimer's. David tells her that he got quote unquote busy with the new job and couldn't come visit her before she died, which Mia seems to hold some resentment for. Olivia and Eric tell David that Mia tried quitting her drug addiction last summer, but only ended up overdosing, which nearly killed her. She says that this time, if Mia backs out, they won't let her leave the cabin. This time the only way is the hard way, man. She won't survive another OD. Mia begins to experience withdrawal symptoms very quickly and definitely ain't having a good time. She keeps complaining about a foul smell that no one else seems to notice. This is because her withdrawal symptoms make her more sensitive to strong odors. However, Grandpa is always sensitive to smells and leads them to discover a cellar door with a trail of blood leading inside. And that would have been my cue to get the hell out of there and hitch a ride to anywhere but Hereville. Inside of the cellar, they see several dead cats hanging from the ceiling. They find the infamous Necromonic or Book of the Dead, wrapped in barbed wire and a double-barreled shotgun sitting next to it, showing that the first scene of the film took place in the cabin cellar. You shouldn't have touched anything from that basement. You're letting the heroin addict tell you that? The book is called Naturam de Monto, and the cover is made of human flesh stitched together. Eric decides it's the coolest shit he's ever seen and begins reading from the book despite the specific warning labels to leave the damn thing alone. Kunda, Strata, 
Montose? Honda. And this releases a powerful evil demon that Mia gets a glimpse at in the woods. He's gone. Give me a break. Best I can do is demonic possession. Mia thinks that she is hallucinating and wants to leave. She asks her brother to drive her home, but he sticks to the plan and refuses. She grabs the car keys and drives away from the cabin on her own. The demon suddenly appears in front of her car, which causes her to crash in a nearby swamp. The demon pops out of the water and begins chasing her through the woods. We see the terrifying first-person shot of the demon chasing Mia, similar to the ones from the original film. Mia trips and becomes entangled in several vines that wrap themselves around her limbs. She then comes comes face to face with the demon who looks like her evil demonic twin. The demon then vomits out a long sluggish like vine that crawls its way into Mia's body. The group finally find Mia, and Olivia doesn't believe anything she says. She thinks that Mia will say and do anything to get out of here. David goes to check on her, and she seems extremely shocked and terrified. She tells him about the entity in the woods and that it followed her into the cabin. He doesn't believe a word she says, and after he walks out of the room, we see the demon through Mia's own reflection in a mirror. While throwing away bags of dead cats in the dumpster, David follows a trail of blood to a small hole that leads to a spot underneath a shed. He finds a mortally wounded grandpa that appears to have been struck by a hammer multiple times. He believes Mia to be responsible and storms inside the cabin to confront her. Mia has locked herself in the bathroom and is standing underneath a shower head that is spraying scalding hot water, which starts to burn her skin. David tries to rush her to a hospital, but the road out of the woods is completely flooded. Eric now sees that what's happening to Mia is exactly what is depicted on the pages of the Naturam de Monto. Olivia sedates Mia and states she should be out for a couple of hours. Natalie blames Olivia, who has been taking charge and trying to cure Mia's addiction the whole time. Everything's been getting worse. Every second. Yeah, immediately after you read ancient texts from an evil book. Fully possessed Mia enters the room and shoots David in the arm with the boomstick. You are all going to die tonight. She passes out and Olivia not so quickly attempts to grab the shotgun. She is quickly stopped by Mia and gets a face full of throw up blood for her troubles. She pushes Mia off into the cellar and Eric quickly shuts the door. Olivia attempts to wash the blood off of her and sees a demonic reflection of herself in the mirror which then shatters. We then see pages of the book flipping on their own and stop on a page which depicts self mutilation. The door shuts on its own and we see Olivia starting to also become possessed. Eric goes to check on her and to his horror finds her in the bathroom slicing her own face off with a piece of glass. The most terrifying aspect of this scene is hearing the repeated noise of flesh being sliced. We know exactly what's happening and just hearing that sound is truly disturbing. Olivia. Olivia has fully turned into a Deadite, a demonic possessed individual that will stop at nothing to kill humans and take their souls. Deadites are able to possess and turn other humans into Deadites through physical contact, violently attacking humans, or possessing a deceased body. Mia was turned into a Deadite when she was penetrated in the forest, and Olivia turned when Mia threw up all over her face. He proceeds to slip on a conveniently placed banana piece of her flesh. She stabs him in the chest with a piece of glass and then stabs him with a syringe multiple times. He manages to push her off and then pulls out the syringe needle that broke in his face directly beneath his eye. Thank God for those birth control glasses. Dead-eyed Olivia begins to crawl towards him, and he bashes her head in multiple times with a broken toilet tank lid, killing her. David gives Eric some backyard medical treatment, and Eric tells him that what's happening is his fault. He realizes that he released the evil when he read the passage from the Naturam de Monto. Natalie heads to the cabin for some water and sugar for Eric, and notices the cellar door wide open. Dead-eyed Mia calls out to her in Mia's normal voice, attempting to lure her into the cellar. Not so bright, Natalie falls for the trick and gets pulled right in in true horror movie fashion. <laughs> We then get the arguably most disturbing and iconic scene from the film. Natalie tries to defend herself with a box cutter and Deadite Mia bites into her hand. She then takes the box cutter and licks it which splits her tongue right in half. 
This scene was absolutely brutal, and I love that the film doesn't shy away from all the gore, unlike this video that's trying not to get age restricted. David pulls Natalie out of the cellar and proceeds to nail and chain the door shut. Eric attempts to burn the Naturum de Monto, but it is unaffected by the flames. We learn that the demon he unleashed is called Shaitan, or the Taker of Souls. The demon needs to feast on five souls, and when he does, the sky will bleed and the abomination will rise from hell. Seems simple enough. Kill five people, take their souls, and get a free ticket out of hell. I'll remember that for when I wake up down there. The demon attached itself to Mia when it was released, and Eric says that they must kill her to stop everything and save her soul. According to the book, the possessed must be cleansed in one of three ways. Burned alive, completely dismembered, or buried alive. In the kitchen, Natalie tries to wash the bite on her hand and squeezes out black sludge coming out of it. Her hand quickly becomes more infected and grotesque and spreads to the rest of her arm. To stop the infection from spreading, she makes the brave decision to amputate her own arm off with an electric meat cutter while dead-eyed Mia creepily watches from underneath the cellar door. The electricity suddenly goes out and the boys find her in the kitchen with her arm barely hanging. Dr. David applies a makeshift tourniquet on her arm with some duct tape not even tightly applied. He should be applying it as tight as he can higher above her arm as opposed to right above the injury. While she made the smart and brave decision to cut off her own arm to stop the spread, Natalie turns into a dead-eyed anyways. She arms herself with a nail gun and makes sure it's working properly by nailing her face a couple of times. She then unloads an entire clip onto David and Eric. She begins to spray Eric with what seems to be an extended mag, but David scores a sloppy double leg takedown on her and briefly knocks her out. She then returns with a crowbar and starts putting the beat down on David. Eric begins shooting her with a nail gun, which only pisses her off and turns her attention to him. She brutally smacks him around with a crowbar until David blasts her arm off with the boomstick. She then briefly returns to normal before dying in his arms. He carries Eric outside and then douses the cabin in gasoline. He takes out a lighter and apologizes to Mia for what he's about to do. She then starts singing the lullaby their mother sang to them as kids. Damn you, emotional nostalgia! He can't bring himself to burn her alive, and when lightning strikes a tree on fire, it gives him an idea. He goes out to the shed to grab a battery and some jumper cables and wraps them around a couple of large syringes. He goes down to the cellar with a sedative, but is suddenly attacked by Deadite Mia with the box cutter. She throws him around several times and then holds his head underwater, attempting to drown him. He is saved by Eric, who knocks Mia out with a sledgehammer, but is stabbed with a box cutter in the process. This dude has taken so much much damage that his health bar has got to be at 1% right about now. And he's dead. David brings an unconscious Mia outside and puts a dress on her as well as a plastic bag over her head. He begins to bury her alive, but Mia starts talking to him to try and make him stop. You left me all alone with our sick mother when I was just a kid. This doesn't work and David fully buries her underground. As we hear her heartbeat slowly begin to fade, the burning tree suddenly goes out, signaling her death. He quickly gets her out of the hole and uses his homemade defibrillator to try and bring her back to life. Please, come back. Mia comes back to life as her normal self, showing that going to backyard medical school finally paid off. The siblings embrace and Mia thanks him for not leaving her. He goes into the cabin to retrieve the keys, and dead-eyed Eric, whose health bar regenerated back to 100%, stabs him in the neck with a pair of pliers. Mia notices the injured David in the cabin, and he tells her to run. She refuses to leave him, but David shuts her out of the cabin. David then grabs the boomstick, and in a final act of badassery, shoots the nearby gas canister, causing the entire cabin to blow up in flames, killing him and the dead-eyed Eric. <laughs> Mia finds the necklace given to her by David on the ground and picks it up. With David's death, five souls were claimed successfully, which raises the taker of souls from hell. Blood begins to rain down from the sky and the abomination raises from the ground. Thank you. 
The Abomination grabs Mia's arm and we see that skin to skin contact with the demon burns her skin, because you know, it's freaking hot down there in hell. Mia runs into the car and tries to start it, but it's never that easy. The demon breaks into the car and Mia crawls to the hole that leads into the shed. Inside, she looks for a weapon and grabs a chainsaw. Why go for the level 1 machete when you can go for the level 3 chainsaw? The last person to use the chainsaw rudely left it on E, but she conveniently finds some chainsaw gas directly above her. The Abomination makes its way into the shed and Mia retreats behind the shelf. The Abomination begins stabbing the machete through the shelf and slices Mia a couple of times, which actually had me cringing. Mia breaks her way outside and decides to hide underneath the jeep. She manages to get the chainsaw running and cuts off one of the demon's foot. As she tries to crawl away, the demon lifts the car which lands right on top of Mia's left hand and crushes it. As the demon approaches, she brutally rips her hand from underneath the car which completely severs it. Mia gets up looking like a complete badass holding the chainsaw while blood rains down all around them. The abomination tells her that it will feast on her soul and Mia proceeds to completely obliterate the demon by sticking her stump through the chainsaw handle and driving it straight into the demon's face. As you could have already guessed, this is a truly bloody and gruesome kill that I can't show because of age restriction purposes, but it pretty much looks exactly like this. Finally defeated, the Taker of Souls is absorbed back into the blood-soaked earth and blood rain stops falling from the sky. Mia stands victorious as a true survivor and puts on the necklace given to her by David. This girl survived it all. She fought off a demonic possession, a powerful evil demon trying to take her soul to hell, and overcame a heroin drug addiction. In hell, if all that didn't work, I know the number to a guy who helps people appreciate life a little bit more. Mia walks away from the cabin as the lone survivor as the sun rises and we we see the Naturam the Monto closing on its own as the movie ends. During the end credits, we hear the tape recording of the archaeologist talking about the Naturam the Monto from the original film. We then see the beautiful face of none other than Ash Williams. Groovy. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Evil Dead. I absolutely love this remake of the amazing 1981 original. It was absolutely brutal and bloody, and I love the fact that the film was made entirely using practical effects. The film used an absurd amount of 70,000 gallons of fake blood, and director Fede Alvarez said that the ending alone required 50,000 gallons, which is absolutely insane. As a true horror fan, I can tell the amount of love and respect that was poured into the making of this film, and I truly appreciated that. While definitely not as good or iconic as the original film, the remake is a faithful adaptation and it is a welcome addition to the franchise that also stands on its own as a really great horror film. But ladies and gentlemen, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit that like button. My friends, thank you all for tuning in. I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.